in. You're about to go behind enemy lines. Republic of New York City. You're now going behind enemy lines with Gene Baradelli and Russ Gallo. And you are now behind enemy lines. Hey there, how you doing America? Gene Berardelli here with you. As we're taping this show right now, we are going up against the CNN GOP debate. A lot of interesting stuff going on in the debate right now. As we speak, we're looking at uh, Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio basically duking it out. Jeb Bush and uh, Donald Trump probably in the undercard duking it out. They've sort of paired off and they sort of go at each other a little bit here and there. It's an interesting dynamic and everyone else is kind of struggling to find a partner right now. Uh, folks, we got a lot to talk about. We're going to be checking in with Mona Salama, who is actually in Las Vegas as the debate is going on right now. And we're going to see what she has to say. Some of the inside dirt, some of the inside scoop. See exactly what's going on in Las Vegas. I mean, let me tell you, I'm not normally a debate guy. I tend to not watch them as closely as the rest of my hardcore, triple-prime Republican friends. But let me tell you something. This debate is interesting. First of all, I think there was a sale on red ties. Everyone's wearing a red tie tonight because they want to portray strength. This is a national security debate. This is a debate about terrorism. This is the debate about ISIS and what we're going to do about it and how we're going to differentiate ourselves from the Obama administration and from Hillary Clinton on on the right side of the aisle. So everybody's portraying strength right now. Carly Fiorina, stunning red dress. Donald Trump, Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz. Red ties across the board, folks. It's a red tie kind of night. Because you want to portray strength. There's a lot of talk going on about how to stop ISIS. There is definitely a split amongst, I would say, the old guard and the new guard of the Republican Party. The old guard wants Assad out. The old guard wants to be the classic American conservative strategy of going in there, getting out the bad guys, and mopping up later on. The newer Republican wing seems to be the one that's concerned more about domestic policy than there is about foreign policy. To me, the interest comes down to this. The newer wing of the party, the Rand Pauls, the the Ted Cruz's, are subscribing to the idea that you deal from a position of strength within your home territory, you take care of your home interests when you go overseas, and that's it. The old guard goes for truth, justice, the American way, gotta get rid of, like we did Saddam Hussein and, and so many others. That's the plan on the news side, that the cases of the world want to sod out, but they don't want to start a civil war. Well, how do you do that? Very interesting to see. There's not a lot of specifics coming out right now. But what is fun to watch is the interplay between the senators and everyone else. That's one dichotomy going on. Then you have the dichotomy of the old versus new. And then you have Donald Trump versus the world. Uh, Donald Trump, let's just say he is not really a wonk. He is not debating policy and uh, the strong points of legislation that Rubio and Cruz were doing. All very cool, but as Chris Christie said, kind of made some people's eyes glaze over and reminded everybody why Congress is so distrusted and is so hated the way that it is. If you look at the, uh, the polls, they barely break 20% at any given time. But yet, there's all this different interplay going around. It's very interesting to see, and... From what I'm seeing, at least on the Twitters and on the Facebooks and on the social medias, you're seeing a lot of support for Ted Cruz right now. 
They're saying that Ted Cruz is, uh, he's been winning. Ben Shapiro mentioned in the group of people that he's with that Cruz is the clear favorite. Frank Luntz has already said that some of Cruz's talking points have reached over 90% in the, in the uh, real-time polling that he's conducting. It's a lot of interplay right now, and it seems to be about Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio. That seems to be what CNN is pushing. By the way, CNN. Could they have been any more world wrestling entertainment with their opening than anything else? It was a cross between the NBA Finals and a boxing match and a wrestling match. The, the montage in the beginning with the music. The uh, music as the candidates enter the stage, really, came on stage. The National Anthem right before it, which I think is a very nice touch. I always love to hear the National Anthem. Made it feel like a sporting event rather than an actual debate. I was getting ready for uh, Harold Letterman to tell me that this debate was going to be scored based on the unified rules and on a 10-point must system. I mean, come on, folks. They took it a little too far. Because for them, this is ratings. This is a show. This isn't about policy. This is about what can we get Donald Trump to say about Jeb Bush. What can we get Jeb Bush to say about Donald Trump? And hey, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio said this, and you should go back at him, and we're going to give you all 30 seconds to reply back and forth. Come on, guys. I enjoy the policy. I know that nobody else does. I enjoy talking policy with fellow Republicans and debating ideas. And the interplay between Rubio and Cruz kind of showed them to be the two adults. It's, uh, it's very interesting to see uh, a different class of debate going on. The Cruz-Rubio debate, the Jeb-Trump debate. Which one has the higher discourse? Obviously, it's the Cruz-Rubio debate. Which one's going to get the more ratings? Might be Trump and Bush. Uh, the focus group apparently is pro-Trump and anti-Jeb. I see a comment from Frank Luntz right now saying that while the crowd may be applauding, and by the way, it may be a pro-Rhino crowd in Las Vegas. I saw a couple of mentions of that on Twitter and elsewhere. Maybe a pro-Rhino debate crowd. Very interesting to see, by the way. But the folks group that he's with is saying that Donald Trump is winning exchanges with Jeb Bush. Oh, excuse me, Jeb, exclamation point. Very interesting to see. I think there's going to be a lot to chew on coming out of this debate. And you know what? You're going to see... I think you're going to see the rise of Ted Cruz. I think you see Ted Cruz being the most direct. I think you see him being the most forceful. And Rubio is not doing a disservice to himself at all. Seems like everyone else... It's like Gilligan's Island. And the rest... It, that, that's them. Carly Fiorina, try as she might is not getting the same amount of time that you normally see her get on a debate stage. Chris Christie, you know, Chris Christie's getting pretty interesting. Chris Christie right now is being the Rudy Giuliani. He's accepted that mantle. He's the 9-11 guy. He's the Northeast Republican. He's the one that's talking terrorism and being an executive and dealing with the hard questions. And his smartest strategy so far has been what Carly Fiorina did also. Go after the legislators. The legislators have a track record. The legislators are the ones that voted against this, but not against that. They're the ones that took away tools for terrorism and gave some others back. But I'm the one, Chris Christie is saying, that implements it, either as an attorney or as an executive. It, you know what? I think you might see a little bump for Chris Christie. At least among moderates, you're going to see that bump. He may be stealing the audience from from John Kasich. I mean, John Kasich has a fan in uh, Montel Williams on Twitter. Excuse me, on Twitter. And he has a fan in, in some other moderates who feel like he is the bridge that Democrats will cross to vote and cross over on the ballot. I don't know about that. Because you, while you gain some crossover, you're losing your base. You need your base to win. As unpopular or as unrealistic as you may think it is that Donald Trump is going to build a wall, your base wants a wall. Your base wants you to say you're going to build a wall. Is it your end-all and be-all? Is it your end-game strategy? No, of course not. We all know that. But it's a tool that is used later on. I think that's why Donald Trump resonates right now. But you're seeing the adult 
Donald Trump, quote unquote, in Ted Cruz. He's going to see a bump out of this debate as it continues on. But we got a lot of great show to talk about, folks. We're going to get back to the debate in a little bit when Mona Salama comes on the show right about halfway through. We'll talk about what she's seeing on the ground in Las Vegas. But right now, I want to take you to an interview that we did earlier today. It's for those of you who are tired of talking about the debate, those of you who are just glazing over at another one after another month, you don't want to deal with the debate, fine, I have something for you. I want to introduce you to Dale Bellis from Liberty Health Share, talking about not only the great program that Liberty Health Share has, the self pay patient program that they've set up where communities help communities and people come together to pool their resources to take care of each other's health care needs. But it kind of fits into the debate in this sense. We're talking about fundamental changes on our country coming in 2016. We're talking about preserving, I should say, preserving. That's not even a word. Talk about preserving our personal freedom, the freedom that we all enjoy in this nation. And Liberty Health Share does that by putting the power back in your hands when it comes to your health care decisions and who you're going to see and treat with and all the things that you have to decide that you've given your brain up to and let an insurance company deal with. Take a listen to this interview that we did with Dale Bellis. I think you're going to enjoy it. It may open your eyes. And I'll come back at the end of that, and we'll talk a little more. Take a listen to this. Gene Baradelli, back behind enemy lines, and on the phone with me right now, it is my pleasure to introduce to our audience, Dale Bellis uh, from Liberty Health Share. I've been talking about Liberty Health Share for weeks now on the show. You've heard the ads. You've heard me talk about it. They're one of our great new sponsors on the show, and we're so happy to have them on board with us. Dale, thanks for coming online with me today. How are you? It is such a pleasure to be here, Gene. Thanks for the invitation. Oh, it is absolutely my pleasure. I hope we can make this a regular thing because, uh, you know, when we met at Value Voters Summit, you were hands down one of my favorite interviews to do. Not only because of the clarity of which you're able to articulate exactly what Liberty Health Share is, but you actually get me excited to talk about health care. I know nothing about health care, and you get me excited to talk about it. Well, that's great. I'm glad to know that. <laughs> so listen, do me a favor. Reinforce every, you know, reinforce to everybody what Liberty Health Share is and why you are leading the movement in changing the face of what healthcare and healthcare providing is all about. Liberty Health Share is a nationwide association of like-minded people who have united together for the express purpose of sharing each other's medical expenses. We do that without the aid of an, uh, of an insurance company or the government. It's just a regular, systematic way to meet health care expenses, and we do it on the basis of mutual assistance or mutual aid. We take a solemn pledge to be there for one another whenever we have a medical expense, and we share our uh, expenses together and send our share amounts to one another. It's person-to-person cost-sharing. And it's self-patient pay system that is really at the heart of what we like to talk about is communities helping communities, people helping people. The best part about it is is that you are taking control of your own health care and you're not, you're not giving your brain out and giving you know, your, your choices out to some third-party insurance company. Right, Dale? That's at the core of our value system. Our shared beliefs say, that our rights and liberties and values come from God. There's nothing more personal, more central to our existence than the care of our bodies, our health. And we exert our right to manage, direct, and control our own health care free from government intervention. Actually, Gene, Liberty Health Share represents freedom from health insurance. And we've abandoned the health insurance model. It's rising costs. It's bureaucracy, it's intrusion in our lives. We've decided we will take care of it ourselves based on freedom values. And the best part about it is, is you see these state exchanges. Like recently in the People's Republic of New York State, we, we saw uh, one of the largest uh, state uh, nonprofits, Health Republic, go under because there wasn't that sense of community, there wasn't that sense of helping each other. It was mandated by government. Uh, I just want to reinforce to everybody, 